Greetings my esteemed subscribers, today I thought to talk a bit about Game of Thrones, but before I begin to do so, I would again encourage you to follow me on Telegram, first link in the description box below. If you follow me there, it adds to my levels of anti-fragility in terms of censorship. And on another note, the much-anticipated handsome shorts are now back in three different colors, so you can check that out also. You can find the links for those in the description box below. Now, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones yet, don't worry, I won't spoil anything, so you can watch this entire video without me giving all too much away, so I won't spoil anything. So first and foremost, the question you might ask yourself, or you might ask me, is do I recommend Game of Thrones? Is it worth watching all seasons, and I might be biased, but I would say yes, most definitely so. I have plenty of great memories watching Game of Thrones. I remember back in the day a few years ago I used to pre-workout watch a Game of Thrones episode that I'd looked forward to watching, drinking some coffee, eating some sweets or other pre-workout worthy things and then getting excited for the episode, leaving to the gym with that excitement and just having a, a good old day. So uh, yes, I have plenty of good memories watching the series over plenty of years, I might add as well, because Game of Thrones has been on for quite a few years now and it's sort of been in my life and, and probably for a lot of other people too. They've been, you know, Game of Thrones has been a part a small part but still a part in your life for a good few years so it has some sentimental value at least so yes for me the memories i bring with me are, are mostly watching that as pre-workout then hitting the gym so uh yeah i might be biased when i say i really like the series now some guys might say it's a degenerate series etc but i would say it's really not if you compare it with Sex and the City. What Sex and the City does is it portrays a degenerate and decadent lifestyle as something glamorous. Whereas in Game of Thrones, the sex, for example, it's not portrayed as something as something glamorous at all. It's portrayed as something ugly, rather. So the sex scenes and the nudity, it only adds to the rawness of the series. It only adds to the darkness of the series is the same thing with the bloody scenes. It's not supposed to be romantic, it's not supposed to be good, it's not supposed to be something worth emulating. So for example all of the scenes in brothels in Game of Thrones, it's not something anyone watching thinking that they want to go to a brothel. Or if you see a scene where Cersei and Jaime are intimate, it's not something that is being portrayed in a good light. On the contrary, it's being portrayed as them being bad people. Same thing with everyone who participates in this sort of deviant behavior. It's to reinforce the fact that they are not the good people in the series. So for anyone who says Game of Thrones is degenerate, I definitely do not agree. And again, to compare it with something else, look at Sex and the City. There it's actually a glamourful thing to engage in this sort of behavior. So if you would watch five seasons of Sex and the City, you would probably think it was uh, a nice idea to live in New York City and to go out and uh, yeah, do what they do in uh, that series. Uh, but none of that in Game of Thrones, it's not being portrayed in a good way. So that's the point of contention I would like to just get out of the way for anyone who says it's um, degenerate. And this is coming from the individual me, who is uh, perhaps the most against porn. So one thing is porn and one other thing is sex and nudity in uh, TV series and films etc. It's absolutely not the same thing and I'm not a prude in that regard. I don't have anything against nudity and sex in series if it adds to the story. But then again, uh, I don't in um, any way, shape or form endorse pornography. But again, two different things. Now, on to the heroes of the series, the heroes of a whole generation, because we have to keep in mind that Game of Thrones is a huge, hugely massive series that uh, a lot of people watch, a lot of people will watch, a lot of people have watched it, and who are the heroes in the series? Yes, they look like this, boom, 
and that's something I'm completely fine with seeing. I'm completely fine with that the heroes are looking like this. Because usually if you look upon other series, it's not all too common to have these white straight men as uh, the protagonists and heroes. Uh, usually they can be that, but then they have some sort of alibi or something that makes it okay. Or you have these ironic Marvel heroes who are always in need of a uh, comic relief or something like that. But if we look upon perhaps the greatest hero of Game of Thrones, it's Jon Snow. And uh, he is the archetype of a hero. Brooding, calm, collected, always does the right thing, uh, doesn't fall for the nefarious ways of the um, less heroic individuals. He just goes straight at it. He is an excellent hero in uh, my view and I'm quite happy that we can have in this day and age when everything is um, Hong Kong clown world ish we can have a hero who is uh, normal in that regard. Then of course there are a lot of villains in the series but again it's supposed to be Perhaps not grim dark as you would have in Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer 40k, but it's still realistic in that sort of way, in that sort of brutal way. So you have a lot of, yeah, as I said, in regards to the sex, you have a lot of deviancy in um, all shapes and forms. So um, again, I think that adds to the series that is not only happy go lucky, but it is a bit brutal and not to spoil anything, but a lot of characters die, and I think that's good. Uh, it adds to the excitement of the series and uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the reasons I liked it and I got excited for it because you never knew what uh, was going to happen. So that's basically my reasons for recommending this series uh, to you. And also another thing I think is really important to point out that the people who are seeing this series, they um, obviously get an injection, perhaps not an injection purely of European history, but the whole series, the books, are heavily inspired by European history, as most fantasy is, to a certain extent at least. And if we look upon Game of Thrones, compare that with the War of the Roses, yeah, it's a quite good comparison. It's obviously not based completely upon it, but it is clear that um, George Martin has taken some inspiration from that time period in English history. And here's a side note here, if you want some good books, Connie Gilden has written a few books on the English War of Roses, so uh, yes, good uh, book recommendation right there. So anyway, I think a lot of people, they are getting more in touch with history. And in my view, that's an absolutely good thing. So perhaps they start watching that and realize that, you know, history can be interesting, even though it's not history per se, but they can still go towards that sort of interest. And uh, that, again, in my view, is a good thing. Then, of course, not everything in the series is perfect. I'm not saying it's the perfect series, but I'm saying it's good enough for me to recommend. And when I say that, I don't endorse everything in it, but that's the case with everything. Um, I can't endorse everything someone has said or someone has done or something is being portrayed in a series, but it's good enough for me to recommend. So that's my thoughts on Game of Thrones at least. Plenty of good memories, plenty of motivation to, to train or to just um, enjoy life. So thank you for watching. XOXO. Boo.